Man, what up, though? Y'all already know how I go. Smash, like, comment, subscribe, all that. Make sure that notification bell active. Check out the videos. You get what I'm talking. Hit me up on those platforms. Thank all y'all who've been following me on Instagram. Send me those messages of encouragement. Appreciate y'all, women and men. And especially for me and Brit, you, you usually don't get that much love. So I appreciate it. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Um, shout out to, I don't have the names on hand, for those who cash at me. That money going to stay right there until it build up. And then, I, you know, I pay for one of those interviews with those guys. I might get one for free. It's going to be easy to get the interviews over the phone and the written interviews with the guys, this uh, gang banks and stuff, that, or the Rimmer Bays and, the, you know, uh, SMB Spade, 7 My Blood Spade, 55, uh, 82 Bad Guy, excuse me, not 82 Bad Guy, 82 Tim, uh, Bad Guy Dre, uh, Mirror with the Four Corner Angelos. It, it, it'll be way easy to get those interviews. Uh, the other guys I'm working on, they different. You got to talk to them. You got to cater them, cater to them and, you know, or whatnot. But I'm in discussions. And trust me, I'm going to pull one of them off. Ain't no if, ands, buts about it. This is me we're talking about. I'm going to pull it off definitely for y'all, man. I'm, I'm glad y'all support me. So thank y'all for the cash ass, bro. No matter how smart, no matter how big, I appreciate it. It's going to sit right there until I get it all together and, and work this thing out. Um, this video is requested by, who is it requested by? JP requested a video on extortion. How do they approach you for extortion? So it's, it's multiple types of, of extortion. And it depends on what they're extorting you out of. They can extort you out of sex. They can extort you out of whatever drugs you get, your commissary, uh, you, you people say, they got all types of ways to do it. So I'm going to break some of them down for you, the ones that I give you off top. So the simple extortion is, and it depends on who gets you first, too. Do you got a predator, like a, a sexual predator extorting you, or do you got a regular person extorting you? For example, let's just use the bloods, for example. One of the blood homies get a, a, a white roommate, and he giving all the signs of a sex offender. And the homie goes to him and he asks, what you in here for? And he gets some type of BS lie. Or they act, you know, they, the sex offenders trying to lie. They, in some reason, the sex offenders are super, super dumb. Most of them are just super, super dumb. Just super dumb. Right? They'll say, um, I don't know why I'm in prison. They just sent me to prison. I, they, I just woke up one day and they was like, hey, uh, you going to the county jail, and I've been sitting there three years. Or they be, oh, I'm in here for ten murders. You're here for ten murders, dog. Yeah, yeah. I killed. I was, I was taking hits for the mafia. I got ten murders. Got caught with seven bricks too. Oh, you down the feds? Nobody ever heard of you. You got these big glasses, walking around scared all day. And you killed ten people and had some bricks. Like that's they tell the craziest lies while they locked up. So that's how you. You know, you, you kind of tell. And then a lot of them just, just awkward people. Just, just awkward people. Sometimes I'll be feeling like maybe they had no choice but to like little kids because that's the only people that like them. And I ain't say this excuse or something like that. It's horrible. And I'm going to give you all a story on, on a sex offender too and what, what happened. Oh, man. I got some juicy stuff for y'all, bro. Um, so, okay, he tell a crazy lie. You get his name off the door because your, your name on the door with the number, last name. They had your people look you up. They had their people look you up. Okay, he ain't here for touching somebody 13 through 15 when he was 40 or 50. So they come to you and be like, okay, hey, you want to stay on the yard? You want to do your bit not in the hole? You don't want to have problems from joint to joint that you go to because you know the blood's everywhere. Or if it's a GD, you know the GD's everywhere. You know I can send word here, here, and there, keep looking you up. And nobody really want to live in a home for a long amount of time unless you're very, very, very scared. There's only so long you can do in the hall, especially when they won't ride you out. You could go lock up, stay in the hall for a long time, but they'd be like, oh, you're just going to stay there. You're just going to stay there. And a lot of sex offenders uh, throw feces on the guards just to go to a higher level so they can be in a room by themselves and never have to come out because they ain't no dinner or lunch or nothing like that. And they can shower in their room, level five. They don't care if you come out the room or not. They don't care. 
You're a level five. They don't want to deal with you no way. You're a potential threat. So when they approach the guy, hey, look, you don't want none of these problems. You don't want to go to the hole. You don't want to get beat up. You don't want to be cut. Go to your room. Give me your TV. Give me every other thing you got. You get your TV back when your people send me $50. If he lie and say, my people don't send me no money. They're going to take you to the kiosk machine and go look at all your JPEGs. They'll tell you, don't make me take you to the kiosk. Because if you do, you won't get a beat. So the guys being scared like they are, they'll set up a payment plan. Okay, hold my TV. Here's all my food. I'm going to keep my hygiene. I'm going to have my people send you $30 a month. And in exchange, the blood, the GD, the vice lord, the more, more is store people, nation of Islam is store people. They'll be like, okay, well, we'll protect you and make sure nobody else does nothing to you. You only pay us. Now, if you go offer the Moors $40 to pay you and you offer us $30, we are going to compromise. And then we're going to get you off the yard. You're going to get stabbed in your face. You're going to get your face cut like you deserve. That's what they say. I ain't saying they deserve it. Like that. I ain't promoting that. I'm just saying. That's how they approach you. So, let's say you're not a sex offender. You're just a regular guy. But you're soft. And they can see you timid. And you're scared. They'll come to you. Two or three deep. Like, hey, I want to talk to you. Had the gloves on, had one of their brothers flash a knife. He'll pull it out or hit. Or the one thing they do is that they'll talk to you and then they'll say, hey, what's up, blood? Behind him to another guy. And then somebody else will walk up to the guy that's behind him, pull out a knife and pass it to him. So you see it. And then he'll get to looking at you all crazy. And then you see those guys that's getting stored eyes go like this. Hey, look, bro. What you got in your room, bro? You got TV? You got MP3 player? All right, well, I'm going to use your MP3 player. Every time I go to the yard, you can keep it. But I'm going to use it every day at yard. And when I go to bed, you can have it when just the day room's over. Or you can give it to me. And I'll get you a one off the streets. That's a used MP3 player. Give it to him and let him have that one that you can't upload no more new music on, send no messages on or nothing. Let you have the old one. They're like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I or, or they'd be nice and say, hey, look, you can use it the 45 minutes, to the hour that the day room open. But what, whenever yard open and I go out there and exercise, I want your MP3 player. Your MP3 player, you got TV. I want to use no love and hip hop nights. All right. Hey, can your people send me twenty dollars, or can you give me thirty dollars a store, or twenty dollars a store? I promise nobody won't do nothing to you. Nothing. You just gotta pay your dues, bro. And they manipulate these weak guys into that feeling like they gotta pay. One thing I don't understand though is like, all you gotta do is take that. All you gotta do is take that initial assault. All you got to do is get whooped on one time, but fight back. Guys ain't going to really try you like that because they know they ain't going to get nothing out of you but a trip to the hall. But when you got numbers, when you got knives, when you're intimidated guy, he's scared, you're not really tough. And all you guys out there just in the streets and stuff like that, all y'all not tough. You're committing robberies and stuff like that. All right. and, 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 and fighting and gangbanging, some of y'all not really that tough. Because when you go to the joint, Especially if ain't nobody got your back. A lot of y'all gonna be cowards. A lot of y'all gonna give up that stuff. A lot of y'all gonna ask y'all moms and fathers to send twenty, thirty dollars. So that's how they approach you. They, they'll, you know, they catch you going to your room and coming there five deep. Hey, what's up, bro? You got something for me? Or they know you're a drug addict. They'll keep giving you suboxone strip after suboxone strip or, or, or a piece of it. Because one suboxone strip costs uh, $8 in the streets, $8 to $10, and a suburb is 15 
and there it go for two hundred dollars. <laughs> you do the math, at least two hundred dollars, right? So they'll keep feeding you drugs, feeding you drugs. Now you can't pay it. What are you gonna do? You gonna go to the hall, or you wanna live regular? All right, bro. Since you owe me two hundred dollars, I'm adding one hundred fifty dollars interest. And thirty dollars a month after that. Keep doing that for me, or I want all your dinner trays for the next year. And guys that do the, those stupid deals, like, bro, they barely feed you in there. You only get so much on store and it's a care pack, but they'll make those deals. It's all about intimidation. It's all about how you look at God in His eye. I don't been a part of uh, extortions. My blood, homie, four one. Mark, bounty hunter. Um, he found out one of the bloods was uh, gay at the last facility. So, But we had a level one, so he don't really want to get in trouble. He want to go home. He been down since he was 16. He already just, you know, he, he closed it on his eighth year, final year. So he like, look, when I approach this guy, just look crazy behind him. You already know how I go. I'm like, yeah, I, I know. I, I don't deal before. I don't talk to guys. So I go behind him. I got my hand in my pocket while he's talking to the guy. Hey, look, I know he, he go to him and say, hey, look, I know for a fact you was having sex at the other joint. Multiple bloods rolled in, told me, multiple people rolled in and told me, the homosexual rolled in and told me. So look, this is what you about to do. You about to, for making me look dumb, and because you respect me, right? Do say right, yeah. And because you respect me, you gonna pay me instead of me doing something to you. And I'm behind them, and they, they already know what I do when I was a level one with no cameras here, here, and there to them sex offenders. They already know what I do. So he thought, like, possibly Bardia or Vinci, he'd do this to me. So I got my hands in my pocket talking to him. While you talking to him, I'm behind him. We walk him in the unit, get his TV, get his MP3 player, get $90 worth of food from him, take his shoes, his sweaters, his clothes, everything. Send his mama $30 every freaking two weeks. And my homeboy was scandalous. He's like, I don't care if your mama got cancer. I don't care if she went to the hospital. I don't care if you worried about none of that. Whatever, you should be lucky. I'm not stabbing you in your face for being gay. You no longer blood. Don't claim it no more, no none of that. But we won't tell everybody that you gay. We're going to keep that to ourselves. As long as that money rolled through. As long as the money rolled through. And he paid until he went home because he didn't want no trouble. He was in his classes that he's supposed to uh, complete before he go home. So you got you in your classes. It take a while to get in those classes because other people about to go home too. So when you get kicked out of those classes and then you go see the parole board, they'll be like, no, nah, we can't, you ain't got the classes. Flop or we'll holler at you when you finish the classes. So people ain't trying to ruin that. People ain't trying to ruin being able to walk around freely in a level one or an open level two. People ain't trying to get kicked out of their classes. People ain't trying to get buck 50 and beat up. So they, they give it up. And when I think about it, that might be the smarter thing to do. Because I know if somebody approached me and said, Hey, Bardio, hey, Vinci. There's a call me Vinci here. Hey, Vinci, hey, Vinci here. Hey, uh, we need 50 bucks. And there's four guys behind them. You know what I'm about to do? If I think y'all got a knife, you know what you do? This is how you lock up. You don't go to the police and say, hey, um, I'm scared. I fear for my, you ruin your reputation. I fear for my life. No, uh -uh. Lock me up, I don't feel safe here. Put me in a hole, keep me in a hole, kick me out of my class. Uh -uh. You approach me and tell me you want some money from me, I'ma wait, and if it's a lot of y'all, I'ma wait to the police, get the walking pads, I'm going to stab you in your face or I'm going to punch you all out in front of the police. We all going to the box. Y'all ain't going to have a little bit of time to beat me up. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. Tell me you want something from me. Nobody ever tried me like that, but I'm just like, I, I ain't going to, I can't go out like that. It's, it's unfortunate I got that mentality. They might be doing the smarter thing by just giving it up and going home. But... If you're a sex offender, if you're a weak white guy, especially white guys from the suburbs, the soft, the area brotherhood, Nazi lowriders, 
uh, dirty white boys, the oldest, the Thoris, the hell hitlers. If they don't want nothing to do with you, the FWB don't want nothing to do with you, and you you're Caucasian and you soft, you 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 left to the wolves. You left to the wolves, and you better be happy that the bloods got you instead of a Moorish American, this homosexual predator. Nothing wrong with being homosexual if that's what you do. But when you add the predator on to it, there's something definitely wrong with that. You better be lucky one of the Malags ain't get you this a predator. One of the old vice lords, or used to be vice lord, didn't get you this a predator. You better be happy pussycat in New York didn't get you. Because the bloods and the, and the GDs and the vice lords, the renegades, the cops, they only want, they only want money. They only want money. So think about that. Especially you guys to be touching little kids. Think about it. Think about it before you do it. What's your life about to be like? How you gonna ruin somebody's life by traumatizing them with that? And then when you go to prison, you gonna be very few and far in between the sex offenders are really cut like that. Don't get me wrong. Red. Other, like some sex offenders will give you that business. Ain't no if, ands, buts about it. Them boys treacherous. But that's few and far between. Most of them be dorky, weird. It's something about the way they socialize. You can tell who they are sometimes. And their stories never, ever, ever add up. It never add up. When a guy come to extort you, it's about intimidation because nobody want to go to the hole behind this for real. Nobody want to get in trouble for this. Nobody want to sacrifice their freedom for this. They just want the money, so they're going to try to intimidate you the best way they can. So they approach you like that, catch you in the showers, pull out knives, rob you, keep robbing you. And, and when they come spit this game to you, they'll tell you everything. They'll give you every reason why you should just pay it. You in VPP classes, you're about to go home, you're about to see, you know, you in your classes. You get kicked out of your classes, it's going to be 60, 80, 90, 100, 7 months before you get back into that class. You're about to go home and see the parole board. You're not going to be able to get phone calls. We're going to take all your stuff regardless. When you go to the hall, we're going to have your bunkie open your door. Go in there and take all your stuff anyway. We'll take your foot lock and shoes, everything. You're going to lose it anyway. You ain't going home. You're going to be in here with us longer. Any yard you go to, we're going to get you. We're going to have pussycat rape you. We're going to buck 50 your face. We're going to take out one of your eyes. If you snitch on one of the brothers, if you go tell, if you lock up, if you don't give us what we want. And we, when they tell you all oh, this, I just gave you 11 reasons, right? It is way more than that. Why you should give it up, they, they tell you. Protection. Oh, we ain't gonna let them get you. Because they wanted you. We ain't gonna let them rape you. Because that's what they wanted to do. You're gonna pay the money up. They they even these soft guys, they even intimidate them to into playing chess, right? And they know they're not that good, but they'll make you feel like you gotta gamble with them. Hey, you gonna gamble me? Put, put a couple soups on. Put a couple soups on. And keep, and keep you playing and just beating you over and over for a small amount of money just because you're scared to say, no, I don't want to gamble with you. They do it all types of ways. All types of ways. But the main one is just having a couple guys behind you. One pass the knife so you can see it. They don't have no plans to stab you. He just passed the knife so you can see it and the guy back there ready. you. And when you when, when some of you guys that think y'all tough, that you, but you really soft, the soft guys, when you come off the streets, you sex offenders, when you come off the streets, and you really don't have no dealings with animals, crazy, gangbangers, you looking at this guy like, damn, he's 6'2", 300 pounds, tattoos all over his face. Some of them blood boys be having a headbanger all on their face, five point stars all on their head, teardrops. They be looking crazy. Looking crazy. 
And they get, and y'all, and y'all get scared. Y'all give up everything. Everything. That's how they extort you in prison. That's how they that's how they come to you. They might even come to you. Hey, they'll go look up your paperwork that's not in your discovery packet. And they'll come to you and be like, okay, bro, you want to keep being a GD? It's your name. It's your first, middle, last name. The area you from. Everybody know you from Finkel. Everybody know this is your last name. Everybody know you've been in prison prior with this number. You told on such and such and such and such. How do I keep this to myself, bro? Why shouldn't I go tell the Bloods and the GDs and the Vice Lords right now that they, one of their leaders or one of their heads got convicted of raping a little boy back in the day? Telling on somebody back in the day. Got $50? That gets you all types of weight. They take your stuff and make you pay for it back. They take $400 worth of stuff from you. TV, uh, iPad, I mean, excuse me, not iPad, but uh, what is it called? MP3 player, TV, uh, shoes, all your commissary, all your hygiene, everything. They take it all from you and be like, well, you can pay $75 to get it back. And God be like, damn, that is $400 worth of stuff just to pay $75 to get it back there. Do it, boo. The moment you do it, you in debt forever. Stop playing. You in debt forever. Go try to go join the gang after that if you want to. You in debt forever. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. If you wave a piece of steak in front of a hungry lion that ain't eight months, what you think gonna happen? What do you think gonna happen? The lion gonna kill you for that food and eat you too. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. It's in a cage full of animals. Animal mentality. That's how they extort y'all, man. Peace.